<laughs> hello i was uh i was just uh uh listening to the ocean had a lot to say Whew. it's great to see you i didn't hear you come in but um today we've got a very exciting episode but first let's get started with our writer's exercise Oh, yes, grab your pen and paper. You're right. I got my pen and I got my paper. Now, we're gonna do our stream of consciousness writing, which means when our pen hits the paper, we're gonna write about the same word for one minute straight. Your first word is, get ready for it, is giant. On your marks, get set. And go! Red and the giant ate bread, but also a golden goose, goose, moose, moose, or is it meese, mice, ice, fly? What? Nice work. <laughs> Look at us being writers. Whew, I am feeling good about that warm up. I am, it's true. So now we're gonna play the wash your face game, which is an excellent warm up for your body and your emotions and telling stories because you're gonna change into different characters, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wash your face, wash your face, wash your face, wash your face, and on the count of three, we're gonna turn into a dog. Wash your face, wash your face, one, two, three, and wash your face, wash your face, and now we're going to turn into the happiest person in the world. Oh, I am so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> and now we're going to turn into a really grumpy, grumpy, grumpy person. Go. I am... Grumpy right now. I'm so grumpy. Don't even, don't even look at me. And wash your face, wash your face, wash your face, wash your face. This is our very last one, and I want everybody to turn into a chicken. Bark, 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 bark. And wash your face, wash your face, wash your face. You're gonna turn into yourself. Go. Hey. Good to see you. Good job. It's a good game. So sometimes we can just turn into a bunch of different things. And that can also happen in certain stories. It's good as a writer to have a whole list of different things to turn into. Whether you're acting out a story, writing a story, or just having a good time. Let's be honest. All right. I am so excited because today we have a special guest. Today, I've asked my friend, Damian McClendon, to come onto the show. Now, Damian is the former poet laureate of Cleveland Heights, and he's a teaching artist and a poet, 
every single day. And really awesome. So happy to have him here. Come on, Damien. Hello. Thanks for having me in. Yeah. So, Damien, what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about this amazing poet named Gwendolyn Brooks. All right. Well, I hear you're the expert on her, so... <laughs> Fill me in. All right, cool, cool. So, Wendelin Brooks um, was a black woman born in 1917 in Chicago, um, lived her life in Chicago, uh, and became a poet. I guess how most of us become poets um, from from a lot of a lot of pain and struggle, unfortunately. But what makes her interesting is that she came at a time um, after the Harlem Renaissance. So she was born in 1917. Harlem Renaissance was like 1920 era. Um, so she would have been a child through that whole era. Um, but Langston Hughes, who was a major poet in the Harlem Renaissance era, was a big mentor in her life um, and really, really helped her develop her, her voice and really gave her uh, an idol to look up to, a place to reach to. And well, did she reach? Because uh, she became the Poet Laureate of Illinois and then she went on to become the Poet Laureate of the entire United States. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. And if you don't know what a Poet Laureate is, they are just, you know, <laughs> they are just um, a poet that's bestowed a special honor um, by their community, whether that be their neighborhood, their city, their state, or in this case, the whole country. Um, so she was bestowed with that honor and then she got to do different things at the Poet Laureate, put on different events and even um, mentor other poets and bring other poets to the forefront and help them out as well. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, man, Gwendolyn Brooks, I, I can go on and on. <laughs> I guess we could talk about some of the things she wrote about. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so I guess some poets write about everything, um, from trees to the wind to the blood in our veins to the, the earth on the ground. Um, but Gwendolyn, she focused on the experience of her people. Gwendolyn was a black woman, and as a black person in the United States, um, she dealt with the struggles, of racism, um, sexism, patriarchy, the things. Um, these systems of oppression that 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 plague us to this day, um, and she would write about that. She wasn't afraid to speak truth to power, um, so you will always find her writing about the experiences of her people. So whether that be um, her neighborhood, she has a, a entire book called In the Mecca, where she just writes about this. She lived in a, an apartment complex, and she would just write about the different people and their different stories um, in a, in a very creative and poetic way. Um, so if you ever have a chance to read that book, In the Mecca, I definitely recommend it. Um, we're going to read a couple poems from that book. Awesome. Yeah. You know what I love about poets is that they take ordinary, everyday things and make them extraordinary <laughs> and make them beautiful. Like you said, talking about those struggles and yet Gwendolyn makes beautiful poetry. Yeah, it's, that's what poets do. It's like we look and we see our lives and our lives become poems. Um, <laughs> I like to say that the poet is always poeting. Uh, um, so like for me, even right now, like I'm, I'm taking this experience and, and extracting things out of extracting words, extracting feelings. Um, so when I go back into my work, it's like, oh, wow, I get so much out of these pretty simple experiences. Um, just, just talking in front of a camera can become so much. <laughs> just having and a that's conversation. amazing. Yeah. I, I love that. Always poeting. I wonder if we all could always be poeting. As writers, you know, we've talked about things in the writer's toolkit. And part of that is just taking your everyday experiences and thinking about them in different ways. Yes. So always poeting. I'm going to, that is a, we're going to keep that. Yeah. Wendelin said, she said, um, in order for her to find a poem, all she had to do was open a window. And, and she would see a poem walking or running or dancing or jumping. Uh, yeah. That's exactly it. Like, that's. Yeah, that's great. So well, it's like a poet. <laughs> Put it into those words. Well, I know that you have some poems to share with us. Oh, yes. Yes. So I think I'm going to I'm going to give Damien a little space to share these poems with you. So I'm going to share three poems by Gwendolyn Brooks. Um, the first poem is short, but it is very sweet. It is entitled, We Real Cool, The Pool Players, Seven at the Golden Shovel. We real cool, we left school, we lurk late, we strike straight, we sing sin, we 
Thin Jin We, Jazz June We, Die Soon. Think about how that poem made you feel. Think about the images it made you think of. Think about what that poem could mean. This next poem is entitled, A Song in the Front Yard. I've stayed in the front yard all my life. I want a peek at the back where it's rough and untended and hungry weeds grow. A girl gets sick of a rose. I want to go in the backyard now and maybe down the alley to where the charity children play. I want a good time today. They do some wonderful things. They have some wonderful fun. My mother sneers, but I say it's fine how they don't have to go in at quarter to nine. My mother, she just tells me that Johnny May will grow up to be a bad woman. That George will be taken to jail soon or late on account of last winter he sold our back gate. But I say it's fine. Honest, I do. And I'd like to be a bad woman, too and wear the brave stockings of night black lace and strut down the street with paint on my face. This last poem is actually my favorite poem by Gwendolyn Brooks because it just feels so nostalgic, so real. Like I can, I can remember moments like this. It is entitled, Boy Breaking Glass, whose broken window is a cry of art. Success that winks aware as elegance, as a treasonable faith, is raw, is sonic, is old eye premier, our beautiful flaw in terrible ornaments, our barbarous in metal little man. I shall create, if not a note, a whole, if not an overture, a desecration, full of pepper and light and salt and night and cargoes. Don't go down the plank if you see there's no extension. Each to his grief, each to his loneliness and fidgety revenge. Nobody knew where I was and now I am no longer there. The only sanity is a cup of tea. The music is in minors. Each one other is having different weather. It was you, it was you who threw away my name. And this is everything I have for me. Who has not Congress, lobster, love, luau, the Regency room, the Statue of Liberty runs, a sloppy amalgamation, a mistake, a cliff, a hymn, a snare, and an exceeding sun. That was awesome. I wish you could hear all the claps from all the friends <laughs> out there. But that was so great. Oh, thank you. I love sharing uh, Gwendolyn's work. It just feels, it just brings me back to those moments of the child. Yeah, yeah. and he, I really, uh, I could hear the realness and also what you talked about with the ordinary in terms of when she's talking about the backyard yeah. and those moments, you know? Yeah. We can all relate to those moments of hanging out in the backyard or hanging out outside. Right. I know my mom was really strict. She didn't let us go a lot of places. Um, so I think that that's like a call back to that, like um, feeling like <laughs> got to be home when the street lights come on. Um, we was looking out for our safety, but at the same time as kids, you kind of wonder like what it would be like. Yeah. yeah, and there was something in that last reading, I know for me, uh, it was really beautiful to hear how much you related to that poem. And I think that is the thing about poetry, is we can really hear ourselves and find ourselves, yeah. even if it's not our poetry, but somebody else's. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of it. It's, it's um, James Baldwin said, we share our pain and it allows us to liberate others from their pain or allow us to, to to feel a little less pain and that's that's the goal yeah, yeah. sharing experience yeah that was great thank you so much thank for you. coming on that was amazing that was great so now damien is going to share an awesome writing activity with us so make sure you have your pen or pencil and paper and of course imagination he gets it <laughs> Say, I'm ready. 
Cool. Um, so Gwendolyn Brooks was so amazing that she actually had a poetic form named in her honor. Um, and this is called The Golden Shovel. Golden Shovel. Gold, oh, it's just written here. <laughs> Golden Shovel. So just like with other forms, there are rules. Um, so just like haikus and limericks, golden shovels come with a few simple rules that if we follow, we can make some cool, cool poetry. So the first rule is to take a line from a poem that you admire. It could be any poem. Most of the time people choose, tend to use um, Gwendolyn Brooks poems, but it doesn't have to be her. It can be, it can be your best friend's poem. It can be Langston Hughes, Robert Frost, anybody. Um, so yes, take a line from a poem you admire. Step two, use each word in the line as an N word in your poem. So I guess that would be, for example, we real cool. You would take we and real and cool, and those would be the N words for your three lines that you would write. Step three, keep the N words in order. So if we're taking the line, we real cool, we're going to keep it just like that. We real cool, not real cool we or some other combination of that. Keep it in order. And finally, give credit to the original poet. Mm. It's always, always, always a good thing to give credit where credit is due. Very important. And the last thing I want to say is that the poem that you write doesn't have to be about the same thing that the original poem is about. It can be about any subject that you like. Awesome. So, do you have an example? I did. Came prepared. So, I wrote this example for you guys, and I used the first poem I read entitled We Real Cool. I took the line, We Real Cool, We. And I wrote a golden shovel for you guys. So now I'll read it. I am a flower. When it's just me, but when it's we, I feel like a garden. Everyone's different, and that makes life real colorful. When it's just me, I get a little sad, but I'm cool when it's we. Feel like it's my birthday when it's we. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank that was you. a great poem. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> All right. So as you noticed, um, I use those words as my N words. And you can read those words if you just read down. We real cool. We. That is great. Thank you. What an awesome way to write a poem. That's what I thought. I really enjoy golden shovels because they really, it's like recycling. It's like, it's, it's like taking, taking one thing and it, it can be an awesome poem already. And you kind of like... Uh, Take a little bit of it and add your own awesome sauce to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. So now. You want to write one with me? I do. That would be awesome. Okay. Cool. Check it and see if we got this the right way. And maybe down the alley. So we, and and maybe may oh maybe maybe down 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 the the well, this is the, really, this is really this is all be. one line. Yeah. I just I ran out of room to write in alley alley. Oh my gosh, we did it! Hey. Oh, high fives! Yes! You want your first golden shovel? That was it was my first golden <laughs> shovel. Come on. <laughs> that took a lot of, you know, that was awesome. Yeah. What an great. exciting way to write a poem. Right. It was fun, wasn't it? It was. Thank you so much. Thank you. This was, it was this was exciting and fun for me. This was great. Yeah. It was so great to have Damien on the show today. I mean, he's great. And you know what? Damien, yes. could you maybe read us one of your poems that's a golden shovel poem okay sure i'm super excited i'm gonna give damien the floor i wrote this after boy breaking glass um, so i read that poem earlier and this one is after the line and this is all i have for me it's very short and sweet 
my mother, my brother, and me. In our home, music was always this loud thing shaking our bones. Music is what we use when all else has failed. And I would dance around on my bare feet. Now my souls have become so thick, but I guess that's good for someone that grooves as much as me. Wow, that was great. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Great. Love the dance. Yeah, that was awesome. I right. loved it. Um, and again, that great way that Damien takes things that are ordinary and makes them extraordinary as a poet. That's what we do. Yeah. So thank you again so much for coming on the show. It was great to have you. Yeah, it was and... awesome to be here. Yeah. Thanks for letting me guys teach you about Gwendolyn Brooks and golden shovels. And I hope that you write your own golden shovels. And I'd be excited to hear one of those possibly one day. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, my name is Damien McClendon. It's D-A-M-I-E-N. M-C-C-L-E-N-D-O-N. Um, you can search me on Google and YouTube. You can find my videos and learn more about me. And the best part is, is that Damien is also a teaching artist for Lake Erie, Inc. And as I've said before, you can check out more writing programs and more things about poets and you at lakeerieinc.org. We got some really cool programs to check out. So Damien could be your poet teacher, poetry teacher again. Thank you again for coming on the show. It was awesome having you. Thanks again. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again. Yeah. Thanks for coming, everybody. Bye.